Hello everyone, Giltar here with an action figure review. This time we'll be looking at the Ninja Duel Snake Eyes action figure from the second wave of G.I. Joe Retaliation toys. Now Ninja Duel Snake Eyes here, much like Battle Kata Roadblock being a Wave 2 toy, is far more accurate than their Wave 1 counterparts. Snake Eyes here is basically what we see in the movie. The costume design on the figure matches what we see on screen. So I think that's a really great thing. Uh, articulation is another great thing. So, you know, for example, you could have a great looking toy, but unless it has, you know, it has good articulation, it's basically a statue and not an action figure. Well, this toy, it doesn't disappoint. It has a multitude of joints. We have a ball joint neck, swivel hinges at the shoulders, elbows, and wrists, ball joint at the mid torso, T-bar ball joints at the hips, double hinge knee joints, and finally rocker ankles. Now, that range of joints basically allows you to pose the figure in a great uh, variety of ways. For example, here I have Snake Eyes in a fairly standard upright pose holding a uh, gun, for example, uh, at shoulder level. This is a pose that you would not be able to achieve with any kind of toy or action figure that, for example, had only five points of articulation or, you know, for example, had only maybe largely hinge joints for the arms, for example. So uh, the articulation for this toy is great. It's pretty much on the top tier, the top level of modern G.I. Joe toy design, which you know is a really great thing. Now, next up, uh, aside from articulation, the sculpt. Um, even though I say you know it's a really great representation, has a really good likeness to the costume in the movie, it is something that may not be immediately apparent. There are certain things that you can see that resemble the costume elements. For example, the brown leather-like shoulder guards. Aside from that though, under normal lighting conditions, all the great sculpted detail is going to become muddled and essentially lost in the sea of black that composes the vast majority of the figure. Uh, again, we have the brown shoulder guards, uh, we have red in terms of the Arashikage symbol on the right shoulder. Aside from that, everything else is a matte black. We do have some glossy black though on the uh, head sculpt. For the visor, the faceplate, and two strips going from the front of the uh, sort of upper head or crown area to the back of the head, uh, they're all in sort of glossy, I guess, finish or paint application. Uh, it's really interesting. I think it's a good choice. May not be totally uh, accurate to the movie costume design. The sculpt is, but maybe not the coloring. But at the same time, it allows certain features of the head sculpt to pop out and be more visually recognizable, which I think is a good thing. Now next up, accessories. Uh, a really good assortment, and for me, it's it's a mixed bag. I will say, just up front, I'm glad that we have a good range of accessories for the toy. I think that's always a good thing, to get a good range of options for posing and displaying your toy. On the other hand, because the rest of the toy is essentially spot on for uh, movie accuracy, I do have a few issues here with the equipment given. First of all, the submachine gun, I don't think it's really accurate to what we see in the movie. Snake Eyes begins uh, in retaliation with a single submachine gun that he uses, and then later on he acquires uh, a pair of HK MP7 machine guns, submachine guns rather. And this machine gun that we get with the toy doesn't look like any of them. It kind of resembles them, but you can really tell that it's not either of those types of guns that uh, Snake Eyes uses. Uh, another thing with the toy, we have two pairs, or yeah, two pairs of katanas, of swords. They're both identical, and they, I think they both are meant to represent the Arashi Kage sword that Snake Eyes receives halfway through the movie. Uh, the thing is, he only receives one. There is only one. So I don't see why we're given two identical swords. Uh, I think we could have been given a single Arashi Kage sword, or if we're given two swords, one Arashi Kage sword, and one sword that basically should be a representation of the normal sword that Snake Eyes uses. So that is another nitpick I have. Uh, another nitpick I have, aside from that though, the final one I promise you, is that it comes with two combat knives. That itself is not a problem. What I do have a problem with is that we have a belt accessory with the toy. It comes with a holster for a pistol, which is really neat. Uh, and the pistol is removable, you can use it. And also a sheath for a single knife. That's cool, but when, what we have here is an extra knife that is just basically there. And if you don't have it posed in the toy's hand, you're basically putting it off to the side, where it can be easily forgotten, or worse yet, lost. 
And the thing is, these are toys made for kids like ages 3 or 4 and up. Um, there is no way that a little kid's going to be able to keep all these tiny accessories without some sort of storage system. Otherwise, they're just going to lose it in their home, outside in the yard, or at the playground. Um, so that is something that I think could have been remedied. Um, in my opinion, if I were to decide what should come with this toy, I would eliminate the extra dagger, or the extra combat knife rather, and I would eliminate the extra sword. I would also eliminate the single inaccurate gun. If we could do away with the sword and the knife, let's use the plastic cost in those items to give us, instead of the knife, the sword, and the, the machine gun, give us two submachine guns that are more accurate to what we see in the movie. Uh, maybe because of licensing issues, they can't make exact replica sculpts of HK MP7 uh, submachine guns, but we could have at least be given two smaller ones that resemble HK MP7s. And I think with a single sword, a knife, a pistol, and two HK MP7 type machine guns, I think this toy would have been a little better. I wouldn't have had so many things sort of loose and left over outside of what you can store. Uh, but again, that's just a nitpick from a person who's more about accuracy to the movie. I think, in general, most people aren't going to really care that much. Now, here are some good things about the uh, accessories. Aside from the fact that you get a good variety, uh, you also get really good, uh, for the most part, storage uh, gear. So we have a one sheath, at least, one scabbard from one of the swords. And that scabbard can fit onto a sculpted backpack type of uh, item. Um, that can be pegged into Snake Eyes' back. And you can either plug in the scabbard into the back, or this bundle um, backpack thing, or you can actually combine the scabbard with the bundle, uh, which is actually, according to the concept designers for the movie, what is called the quote-unquote gear sling. Um, the gear sling is something I believe you see uh, in the scenes leading up to the uh, fight on the mountain where uh, Storm Shadow is being... Uh, healed and held with the other ninjas and I think that's a really neat um, sort of nod like the Arashikage sword is something I can definitely see of obviously it's a visible part of the movie and you know that's part of the toy that's great but you know something like the gear sling is definitely a little more obscure something that most people aren't going to really care much about because you don't really see it outside of maybe a couple of glimpses so I think that's a neat touch I do like that uh, and again, aside from that, I really like the fact that the toy comes with a belt that has a holster for the pistol and a sheath for the knife. And even though I did say the submachine gun was not accurate to what we see in the movie, I think it's a good sculpt, I think it's a neat little weapon, and it basically references to the sort of classic Snake Eyes sidearm of a an Uzi. You know, a lot of the previous Snake Eyes toys uh, are equipped with Uzis in the cartoon and comics. Snake Eyes often uses an Uzi or two. So I really like that touch as well. Uh, aside from that though, overall, this is a really great Snake Eyes toy. Uh, I mean, for the most part, it visually captures the costume design from the movie. The articulation is great. And the accessories, while not the perfect or best selection in my opinion, is still a really good selection. So, uh, worst case scenario, you could just basically swap out uh, the extra knife to another figure, the extra sword to another figure, and even the summon machine gun to another figure. And bring in your own pair of... HK MP7 like submachine guns and you basically have a more idealized Snake Eyes toy for retaliation displays. Um, so yeah, I definitely think this is a great toy. I do recommend it. It's currently on retail shelves and you can buy it through online retailers. It's not too expensive being between seven to ten dollars depending on where you're at. Uh, and I'm using North America as my range of pricing simply because I am a North American. I am a Canadian. So keep that in mind. If you live in other parts of the world, the price may be a little higher. And then if you're lucky, maybe a little lower. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Have yourselves a great day. And I'll see you at the next video.